Good morning, friends. I am down here in Archers National Park. Again, I drove down here late last night after work. I got in around like 10 o'clock at night and went straight to bed because I was absolutely exhausted. But it's now about like six in the morning, maybe just before, and I'm out here again in the windows section of the park. Looks like there's quite a few people here and there might be some sort of like photo group or photo tour, but I just wanna experience the desert again and enjoy the sunrise here. So looking forward to a great weekend here in Arches National Park. So it looks like I was exactly right with some sort of photo group or like photo tour up here. There's basically one spot here in the north windows where you can shoot through the north window and then you pick up the turd arch, which is another arch through the other side. And because the sun is gonna rise here, it casts an awesome light on the north window here. That spot is pretty booked up. You can see it's like right over my shoulder there. There's probably a group of like five or six photographers up there stacked with tripods. So it looks like we have a slight uh, cloud coverage out in the horizon out there, which might kind of hinder the sun, at least on the beginning as it comes over the horizon. But it's all part of the landscape photography and just enjoying the morning like this. So there's only so much we can do. But either way, it's still a beautiful morning out here to enjoy an Arches National Park. I'm stoked to see people out here uh, doing the same thing. All I want is this is the current vista that I'm looking out on, uh, where again, they said the sun is kind of getting blocked by this this big low cloud right here. We have the Cell Mountains over there, your south window, and then your north window right there. been waiting here for the sun to break. There's just been some some thick clouds there in the horizon. I might put on a long lens and uh, do some photos. I'm uh, trying to kind of pick out the smaller abstract details within such a grand vista. You know, it's so easy to want to just shoot this entire thing, but there's so many little compositions and so many little minute details that I see. So I think that'll just kind of be a fun exercise because we're not really getting the light that we thought we were going to get. No, 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 no. And I spoke literally like a minute too soon. We now have light on both of the windows here. Uh, this entire section is now illuminated. The sun broke behind me here, and now the entire window section is just illuminated with light. This is one of my favorite parts of the day is like the post sunrise like breakfast meal thing. So I don't have like a ton to cook up, but I got some eggs and some good oatmeal. I haven't had any coffee yet. Acquired uh, unlimited data or data, whatever you want to say. I can now use like a hotspot and get some work done, like literally while I'm in these national parks or before I didn't have the unlimited data. So I recently also like expanded my storytelling from just vlogs to also trying to create a blog post like once a week or whatever. A blog is just another way I can kind of exercise that creativity and it's more of like a reflection on the vlog where the vlog is much more like in the moment in terms of what is going on right th then and there. This is currently my view as I'm writing. Oh, what's up, dude? The Devil's Garden Trail Loop is like five miles. There's really no elevation. I'd say maybe like four or 500 feet, but you can see eight total arches. So it's one of those trails where you can kind of get to more of the remote sections of Moab and Arches National Park and not be so in the crowd. So just getting started here, it's about like 2.30, I think. So I'm expecting to take this probably around like three, four hours with stopping, uh, stuff like that. But we really have no 
Rush. Whoa. Got mud already. Look behind me, like like slot canyon sort of thing. Just walking through these monoliths is so cool. Okay, so the first arch that I came across here is called the Landscape Arch, I believe. And I'll show you guys in a second, but they don't really don't know how much longer this arch is gonna be around for, which makes it even cooler. And I'm standing right here. And in 1991, this is all according to the little info box I have at the start of this little trail, a huge portion of this arch fell off and crumbled and left all this rock debris underneath it. Thus now why it's closed. So you used to be able to go up under the arch, but I think they just are unsure when this whole thing is gonna collapse entirely, which is, it's inevitable. It's going to happen eventually. <laughs> Scrambling and climbing on uneven surfaces and near cliff edges. Not recommended when wet or icy. I think the fun is really about to start now. It looks like I've reached another point here where I can kind of wander down this side trail because we're up here, so I might as well do it. I want to try to get all eight features, all eight arches, but I apologize if I'm kind of like speeding through this overall hike just because it is five miles on uh, a primitive trail, which I love because I think that's like puts us back to our roots. I just don't, I don't know how much more I have to go or, or what lies ahead of me. So keep that in mind as we go through this. This just doesn't make you feel like otherworldly or like you're going back in time. I don't know what will. I mean, it's like, look how cool these formations are. I'm the only one out here again. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I mean, look at this. It's literally like, I don't know, pear shaped maybe? Like it's smaller on the bottom than it is on the top. Right now I see the sign called Navajo Arch. I'd be curious to see what the history is behind this arch. If there was some sort of Native American tribe that settled out here or something, but wow. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's so peaceful. It's so quiet. It's cooler as soon as I went under the arch. I got like this feeling as soon as I walked in here that like something has happened here. I don't know if you guys have ever got that feeling. I don't know if you call me crazy, but like, wow. I mean, it almost looks like this would be some sort of like ceremonial, like, like grounds or something, like a, a campfire or some sort of ritual happened right here. This is just incredible, guys. This is incredible. Man, I wish I had more time literally just sit up there and just soak all that in because, I don't know, man, I felt something as soon as I got underneath that arch, which hasn't really happened to me all too often like that. And also, just a reminder to please stay on the trail, especially when you're in an area like this that is so fragile. I'm boogieing back. I'm gonna go try to find this other arch on this thing and then I gotta keep moving. Seriously, I gotta keep moving the sun. It's already probably got about two hours, an hour and a half left, so I just I just don't wanna get trapped if I can help it. <laughs> In the absence of time, not that that arch wasn't amazing as well. I'm gonna put a photo of it right now and I just wanna keep moving. It was a beautiful overlook, stuff like that. Oh. But yeah, just because of the time, I am getting a little nervous. A primitive trail in the pitch dark is not a good recipe. <laughs> right at the start of the double O arch, I believe, like just about to kind of go up this and look at behind me. I mean, look at the formations that are that are behind me. This is just insane. Here's where I'm at. Double O arch. Just says this way, which, I mean, I guess I'll go up here somewhere. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Looks like I found the double O arch, one, two. At least I think so anyways, this is kind of where the trail has brought me, but man, I am out there. I'm gonna have to make a decision here. I'm gonna check my map. I have this really cool app that's kind of like offline maps for this reason to see how much farther I have if I can go the other way, because if it's the same distance both ways, might as well just rip the full trail, but just maybe not stop at everything. Man, I just feel like I'm on a different planet. I really do, I feel like I'm on a different planet. It's amazing how much different just like the sand is up here now. It's like a lot more wet, thick, and damp just from being a little more just like secluded, you know, not as not as much sun gets back here. It's just like 
Man, it really is otherworldly. So I want to check. I have a snack because I am getting a little hungry. I want to check my app to see just exactly how far I am. Um, if it's worth going on the, the rest of the primitive trail or not. So it's already about five o'clock right now. I think golden hour is about around like 5.30 to 6.30. So it means like 6.30 and it's gonna be dark. And I just don't think a primitive trail in the pitch dark is the smartest idea. I'm basically up in this top corner here. I'm not sure if you can see the blue dot. Um, and I would have to go basically the long way still all the way around here and down to get here. Do I just risk it and send it, or is it just something maybe I come back and I and I finish out the rest of that loop? So I think the move is that I'm, I'm not gonna go any further out on the primitive trail. I think it's only smart to come back at this point being at five o'clock. Like I said, I hope you understand. And uh, I'm sorry if I let anyone down. I feel like I'm letting myself down, so. What would you guys do in this situation? It's always a tough call. If I had someone with me, I would forge on. I have lights, I have extra layers. I just don't like the idea of a primitive trail in the dark. It's just a recipe to get lost. No service out here, not a lot of people. It's a bummer. better about my decision I just I uh, talked with a couple who came up from that side of the loop and they said they would not advise going out there right now uh, just because they said it gets very uh, primitive <laughs> for lack of a better word and they just said it's very treacherous in terms of the hike and it would be a good idea to have light so I'm gonna have to come back and do this with more time and just keep all this stuff in mind Looks like that is the last of that golden light here. You saw just at the end of that time lapse, I would just quickly suck down <laughs> to dark. So I am making my way back down the way I came up. Hopefully it can be down in about 20, 30 minutes and I am ready for a hot meal. I'm gonna see you guys back in the parking lot. One, two, three. Okay, and we're back here in the parking lot. It's amazing. How there's like literally no cars here anymore. I'm gonna move the van a little bit like down the park back towards like the entrance just so I'm not so far in one end and then uh, just kind of chill out for the rest of the night. Well friends, I am absolutely beat. I'm making some dinner. I made some Italian wedding soup with some like sausage sandwiches or something like that so i want to thank you guys for watching another one of my episodes i like cannot tell you guys how much i appreciate it if you guys do watch these so again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video take it easy fam peace